Good morning, friends. Happy Monday. We hope everyone is home and cozy on this rainy Monday morning. It is November 23rd, 2020. And how many days until Thanksgiving, guys? If today's Monday, we have Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday. So three days until Thanksgiving. And we're recording in the classroom today, right? Speaking of Thanksgiving, we want to start our morning with some thankfulness. So all month we've been talking about the things that we're thankful for, right? Mm -hmm. So we've learned so much about thankfulness and gratefulness and we've evolved from just being thankful for our toys, although we love our toys, right? Can we hear some things that we're thankful for this morning? Yes. Who wants to raise their hand? Alisa. She's thankful for the rocks she has in her garden. Do they make your garden beautiful? Yeah. I love that. I love that idea. So we want you to take a minute at home and whoever's home with you this morning, talk a little bit about thankfulness. Let's talk about what we're thankful for, what we're grateful for, what kinds of things make our heart happy, right? We do that every day in school. And a nice little idea, we've been collecting um, the students' words in little jars and they're called thankfulness jars. So it's a nice activity to do at home. Mrs. G, do you want to grab one of the thankfulness jars? So it's a nice activity to do at home. Each day of the month of November, while we're in school, we are asking the students what they're thankful for. So we're writing their words down in a little jar. It's a nice activity for the month, or you could do it for the whole year. And then the following Thanksgiving, you sit and reflect on all the things that made you feel thankful and grateful. So here we have a cute little jar with my friend's picture. Let's just cover her face a little bit. And we have all their words in the jar. So it's a nice little family activity. So back to our unit, it's where we live, and this week's focus question is, what kind of houses do we see in New York City, right? Because we live in New York City. So New York City, we're in the Bronx, that's right, we're in the Bronx, and that's called our borough. But it's still part of New York City. So today we're gonna take a little tour around New York City with this book. And this book has lots and lots of words, and it's kind of long, so, I'm gonna shorten it a little bit, but the best part is the illustrations. What are illustrations? What are illustrations? Well, we see an illustration of the city, right? Those are the pictures. The author writes the words in a story and the illustrator makes the pictures. So this book is called My New York and it's written by Kathy Jacobson. Okay, so we're gonna take a little tour around New York City just by reading this book. Isn't that cool? Very. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with this. Has anyone ever seen this before? I know. You have? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've seen it when I go to Barbara's house. When you go to Barbara's house. This is, look, it's a little map of Manhattan and the surrounding boroughs. So we are in the Bronx. So here's Manhattan, we have Brooklyn, Queens and the Bronx. Oh. This is where we are. Okay. My New York. Let's scooch over here so we can see, okay? Mrs. B's glasses are fogging up. My name is Becky and I live near New the New York Public Library. Some buildings in New York make you feel small but walking up the steps of the library makes me feel important. It's like walking up to the steps of a palace, especially if you walk exactly in the middle. There are even lion guards looking, excuse me, looking down on all the people. The library was my favorite place in New York when we first moved here. My mother painted me a map. You can see it in front of this book. She's an artist and she painted all the other pictures too. She said that once a week we could go wherever I wanted if I could figure out how to get there. For my first expedition, I wanted to see real animals. Finding a zoo on the map was easy. Knowing where I was on the map and which way to walk to the zoo was a little harder. I finally figured it out by turning the map. So let's look at all the artwork on these pages. Do we see that? Wait, his mom did that all? Yes, isn't that cool? 
How, how do we know that this is a city? What are some things we see in the city? The sky. Sure, the sky. And a flag. A flag. Does, is a city busy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of people, lots of cars, and lots of buildings. Do we know what the country looks like? Yeah. The country is more quiet. Less buildings, less traffic, and less people. Right. Where do you think we are now? At the zoo. Yeah. At the zoo. Yeah. Once the map and I were both facing the same direction, finding the zoo was easy. One good thing about New York is that most of the streets are numbered in order. The numbers go up as you go north and down as you go south. It's very logical. So we walked straight on Fifth Avenue. I knew I was going the right way because the numbers kept going up. At 64th Street, we turned left. Sometimes zoos make you feel very sorry for the animals that live in them. But this one, most, sorry, I'm dropping this book. It's heavy. <laughs> I'm going to scooch over. But let me see where we are. But this one, most of the animals aren't in cages. The penguins have rocks to climb on and make their nests with and a pool to swim in. You can stand right next to the glass and see them underwater. They were my favorites, but I also liked watching the insects. I saw a leaf cutter ant bite off a leaf, then carry it all the way back to his nest. So there's a lot going on in these pictures, right? So much people because we're in the city, right? Whoa. Whoa, what do we see here? Joseph said balloons. Yes, have you ever been? To, have you ever been to the city? Uh, yeah. Yeah. How'd you get there? I went there. How did you get to the city? Did you drive? Did you take a train? A bus? I didn't. I didn't go. You didn't go there? Okay, maybe one day you can take a trip. But there's many ways to get to the city. You can drive. You can take the subway. You can take the bus. The train, right, or the subway. Yeah. Very good. A train goes down my downtown. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm a little shaky here. After the zoo, we explored the park and found a carousel. Has anyone ever been to Central Park? Uh, you have? So you have been to the city. I chose a big black horse with a lion saddle. It wasn't like riding a real horse, but it was kind of fun anyway. The horse went up and down when the music started. I had three rides, and when I bought my last ticket, the man told me that my horse was named Bubbles. I wanted to get a birthday present for my friend Martin. My parents said they were going to the 26th Street Antiques Fair and that I could look for one there. They had a lot of toys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have been there when I was at Florida. What do we think we have here? Oh, my favorite. My favorite. What kind of place do you think this is just by looking at the picture, right? So when we read stories, we look at the illustrations for clues. We're at a store. What kind of store? Let's look closer. Can you look closely? You think it's pizza? It, you know what, Joseph? You're right. If you look very closely, that does look like pizza. It's such a small detail, but it's a pie. It's a pie. This is Diaudo New York, New York cheesecake. Mm. On Martin's birthday, and I invited him to come with me on an expedition. That's a big word, right? What do we think expedition means? She keeps saying that she, Becky keeps saying she's going on expeditions around the city. going with the people on a little mini trip, right? That's a big word. First, we went to Diaudo's for cheesecake, my his favorite dessert. My mother says Diaudo's has the best cheesecake in New York. After cheesecake, I'm crooked. After
after Cheesecake, we went to the Intrepid, a real aircraft carrier from World War II. Did we see that? What do we think we can find inside? Airplanes. Airplanes, right. What's inside? People. What kind of people? Uh, the airport, ones. airport ones. The fighter jets are real too. You can climb on the platforms and look inside them. It was very cold, windy day, and we had the whole huge deck almost to ourselves. That was good. If you drive down the West Side Highway, you can see this from the road. I always see that. You've seen it before? Now let's turn, what do we have here? Let's turn this book. This city. Whoa! This city. Whoa, Whoa I'm moving the book back so my friends at home can see. Building. That is a big building and one of our unit words. What is that word called? When a building is so tall, it looks like it scrapes the sky. It's a skyscraper, right? Do we know this building? Have you ever seen it? Okay, so I'm going to flip this back and look at the words here. The next week, we went to the observation deck of the Empire State Building. Have we ever seen that building? Yeah. That Yes, it's a landmark in New York. And a landmark is a special building or place that gives you an idea of where you are, right? Yeah. Location. We stepped onto it just at that magical moment when the city and bridge lights are on, but the sky still has some of the sunset in it and it's not quite dark. You could see so far. In the painting, we are looking north with the Hudson River on our left and the East River on our right. The small green square in the distance is Central Park. It's a huge, huge building. Look at how tall. So tall, right? And look on this page, this is what you could see. Yeah, that's the city. That is? Yep, that's the view from the observation deck at the Empire State Building. Beautiful. Look at how beautiful. Look, you can see the whole city. Whoa, what do we have here? Cool, right? Where do you think we are now by looking at the pictures? A lot of what? Say it again, Joe. Oops, sorry. A lot of paintings. There's a lot of little details in this painting. There's so much to see. They're down on Wall Street where Martin's mother works. Wow. She paints really good. She does paint really good. After that, we all took the subway to my favorite toy store, FAO Schwartz, which I don't think is around anymore. Is it still there, Mrs. Jane? Mm -hmm. Are they supposed to close? It did, and then it opened, and then opened up again. Cool. I found it by mistake. I found it by Mrs. G found it by mistake. So cool. So what's happening to the sky? They started their expeditions in the morning, right? What time of day do you think it is now? Uh, Santina? Time. What time of day do you think it is? Daytime. What's time. what's happening to the sky? down. Remember how we talked about how illustrators use colors to make you feel and think certain a certain way? What do these colors let you know? Warm pinks and oranges, right? That reminds us of the sunset, so we know that it's about to be nighttime. And if we look on this page, then we see it's night. On the 4th of July, we went to the harbor. We saw buildings from before the revolution and a little lighthouse memorial to the Titanic. It has a ball on top that drops down exactly at noon. Beautiful illustrations. I love this book for that reason, right? I think it's neat that people still come to New York from all over the world to make new lives for themselves. 
and that the Statue of Liberty still welcomes them all. Do we know her? Have you ever seen her before? This, say it again, Joe. Yeah, Statue of Liberty. That's another landmark that lets us know that we're in New York City, right? So it's a familiar site that we can see that lets us know our location. These words are on a plaque. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. We read that and then waited on the deck for the fireworks. When it got dark, you could see the two columns of light where the Twin Towers used to be. Beautiful. Uh, I have, right? I have made fireworks at my dad's Be work. Beautiful. Why do you think why do you think we use fireworks? Let's go back to the fireworks for a second. I want to ask you a question. Why do you think we wait until nighttime to, to do fireworks? Because we can see them more. That's right, Elisa, because we can see them better. If the sky fireworks are colorful and bright, right? If the sky is bright, will we see them? That's like, remember our black and white art? Do you draw with a white crayon on white paper? Remember we tried that? We didn't see anything. And how about the black crayon on black paper? No, so we wait until the night sky is dark so we can see clearly the bright fireworks. So beautiful. What do we have here? Just before school started, we spent the whole day playing in Central Park. The picture shows us running to Grand Central. Behind us, oh, this page is bent. Sorry, I'm wobbly. Mrs. B doesn't have any upper arm strength. <laughs> so here we go. So they're running through Grand Central. Behind us, my mother is talking about the Chrysler building. It's my favorite building in New York. So let's flip this page and let's look at the Chrysler building. Another skyscraper. Do you know Mrs. B's husband, Mr. B? Mr. B. Help fix this building and the Empire State Building, right? That's pretty cool, right? He's an iron worker. He makes buildings. So yep. he made that for us? Yes, he oh. did. Isn't that cool? He's so nice. He's very proud. He's very proud of his work as an iron worker. Yes, he is. And he worked on this building. He sure did. A huge ladder. They use a crane to get all the way to the top. Where do you think we are now? A museum. Exactly. A museum. Right? Because can we see these bones anyplace else? Yeah. We can? Where? <laughs> Right there. Right there, yeah, in a museum. I saw the dinosaurs at the American Museum of Natural History with my class at school. And then again with my mother. How cool is this? If you go anywhere, you have to go to this museum. It is super cool. We need to stay next to our mommy. Absolutely, that's a very good point because... It can get busy and it can get crowded, so you stay close to an adult. Very good, Elisa. And where do you think we are here? Has anyone ever seen this before? No. Can we see? These are what the stops on the subway look like in the city. So when we pull up on the train, we know we're at the 81st Street Museum of Natural History stop. This is a very long book, so thank you for being patient. Here we go. 
Here's another museum, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which is also super cool. Because remember those paintings that we, we copied underneath the desk, right? A lot of the artwork that we look at in school, we can see hanging in this museum. The Apollo Theater, another landmark. 125th Street in Harlem. Isn't that cool? And we see all the billboards, advertisements. <gasps> What is happening here? Halloween. Halloween. Halloween, right? I went trick or treating with Martin, but his mother wouldn't let him come to the grown up Halloween parade in Greenwich Village. I went with just my parents. My mother held her hands over my eyes twice, but I got to see most of it. That means that sometimes things are a little too scary for kids, right? Yeah, it's not scary. And here we are in Chinatown. More beautiful pictures. What's happening in this picture if we look super close? Do we see what the people are doing? Yeah. What are they doing? They're Look close. The New York City Marathon. People come from all over the world to race in this very special race, right? My favorite, Radio City Music Hall. In New York, the holidays start early, weeks before Thanksgiving. The Christmas decorations go up and the Radio City Christmas Spectacular opens. So cool, the North Pole, it looks like the North Pole, right? Look at this. Look at this, right? That's the Plaza Hotel. Mr. B worked on that too. Mm -hmm. Yep, go Mr. B. And look what we have here, the Thanksgiving Day Parade, the Macy's Parade, right? Do you guys watch that on TV? You do, right? all the floats on a super windy day. Do you know what these floats, what happens to the floats? What do you think happens? They're like big, yeah, they're like big, big, big balloons, right? So they blow all over the place. And now we have another big picture to end our book. Wait a minute. <gasps> What's that guys? Oh, yeah. What's this? The tree at Rockefeller Center. And that just went up the other day. I saw it on the news. Oh, oh, I saw that downtown. You saw it? I saw that downtown. Downtown, exactly. Isn't that cool? And you can go ice skating. There is something behind it. We're gonna put this page down. This page is bigger than me, right? And we're gonna flip it. I just love this book. We can go on a little tour of New York City without even leaving the classroom. What do you think is happening here? It looks like a parade, yeah. right? It's New Year's Eve in Times Square. Do you ever watch that on TV? Yeah. When the ball drops and everyone yeah. says, Happy New Year, right? Happy New Year. Yeah, look at all the people. This, we went all around New York, right from our classroom, right? So speaking of skyscrapers, we saw a lot of tall buildings in the city, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so today in school, measuring tools. So this is what we want you to do at home. After watching the video, whatever things you have at home to build a skyscraper, we want you to do that. It can be blocks, it can be boxes, you can stack toys, you can use anything you have to build some skyscrapers. And we are gonna start talking about measurement, okay? So here I have a whole box of measuring tools and there are different ways we can measure. I have a tape measure, which me measures inches. Okay, an inch is about the length of your thumb. Can you hold up your thumb? That's 
That's about an inch. Hold Santino, me. come here. We're gonna use here. Don't put your face. Just if I could see your thumb. Where that thumb. Look at that little thumb. Let's hold it up. Look, Santino's thumb. Here, put your thumb up here. Good job. Santino's thumb is about one inch. Do we see that from one to two? So that's how we can measure, right? An inch. Measuring tape. Here I have a silly foot. <laughs> a so what does a foot have to do with measurement? Why am I holding up a foot? Uh, to see. See what? I'll tell you why. There's numbers on it. They go up to 12. 12 inches is called a foot, but not this kind of foot, right? It's called a foot. 12 inches equals one foot, right? So I have a measuring tape. I have a silly foot and I also have I also have this long stick, right? This is called a yardstick. It's more than 12, I'll tell you that. It's 36. 36. 36. So if we put three of these feet in a line, it's going to be the same height as a yardstick, okay? There are also other ways that you can measure irregular units of measurement, right? You can use cubes, you can line up plastic knives, you can line up anything to count how much something, how tall something is. So your challenge for today at home, build your skyscraper with whatever you have. You can build multiple buildings and you can practice measuring them. Then we can compare the heights, right? Which is taller, which is shorter, which is wider, which is narrow. So, which is ginormous. So for, today, <laughs> so for today's email, I'm going to also attach um, a ruler. If you have a printer at home, you can print that out if you don't have a ruler. So there's a bunch of ways we can measure, okay? We're gonna do a little math today. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. Everyone at home, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.